Today, there are spiritual people in the New Age movement who talk about connecting to your higher frequencies in the universe to change your reality and things like the law of attraction. This is AJ Fortuna from Mind444, and in this video, I'm going to discuss a very powerful and key secret of the universe. We are the universe. We are everything on Earth. The first thing I would like to discuss is consciousness. What is consciousness? According to Tom Campbell, consciousness is an information or data system. Tom Campbell is a physicist, lecturer, and author of the My Big Toe Trilogy. Check the description of this video for a link to a playlist of Tom Campbell's video series, The Big Toe, since this video is based on those videos. Consciousness is the only thing in this physical reality that is fundamental. Everything else, like our bodies, our brains, the planets, trees, and oceans, for example, are derived from consciousness. So now, consciousness is information or data, so to speak. It is an information field. Consciousness is like computer code with ones and zeros. So this consciousness system started off as one and was aware that it could exist in two states, like a one-celled creature that splits in half, and lowered its entropy to become more complex and split into pieces. And those pieces split into pieces to evolve and interact with each other, and each piece is evolving and growing. Consciousness is self-aware, and is constantly changing and evolving. And humans are part of this evolution and larger consciousness information system. So try to think of it this way. We humans are in a big elaborate computer game like the popular online game Second Life or the popular computer game The Sims, interacting with this consciousness data stream so that we can evolve and grow towards love. And we all have our own individual consciousness stream that interacts with each other's stream. One of the feedback systems of this computer game is that you can modify the probable future. We look at the future in terms of probability because the system has created this world for us to live in. Then it also computes what's likely to be next. What's probable to be next? And then given that, that's true. What's probably next after that, given that that's true? Then what's probably next after that? Well, you can only go on so far because the errors are building as you go. But you can go pretty far because most of us are pretty predictable. If you figure that the databases, everything we've ever done, thought, imagined, every emotion, every feeling, that's all in the database of the character. And so what's going to happen in the next tiny second is not that hard to guess. And this can go out for a pretty long way. So you have this future probable database, which as time clicks on, it becomes the present. Free will just exists here in the present moment. We act and we make choices and by these choices we either evolve or devolve. If the choice is out of caring, then we evolve some. If the choice isn't out of caring, then we devolve some. So we have free will. We can go either way we want. Our intent is the motivator, the action. That's what drives the action, is our intent, which is a representation of who we are, what we are at the core level, at the being level, as opposed to the intellectual level, which is what we think we are or hope we are. So here we are. We use our intent and we can modify the probable future. We can change the probabilities around us of what's likely to happen next with our intent. Think of the placebo effect. Study.com states it. Imagine you have volunteered for a study that determines the effectiveness of a new headache drug. You take the pill you have been given, believing that it will help your headache. You find that your headache feels much better after you take the pill. Later, you are told that you did not actually receive the new medicine in the study at all, but you were given a placebo, a sugar pill, instead. A placebo is something given to a person that has no real physical effect. If you were not given the medication, why did your headache feel better after you took the pill you were given? The answer to this question is that you experienced the placebo effect. The placebo effect is a real, true life phenomenon that occurs when a person believes he or she is receiving real treatment and reports an improvement in his or her condition. So it's real medicine because now we have a positive attitude towards our outcome. Well, you're putting energy into modifying the probability that you'll get better as opposed to worse. You see, it's your intent. How do you heal somebody with your mind? It's your intent that does it. Think of the study by Masuro Emoto. Wikipedia.com states it. Masuro Emoto was a Japanese author, researcher, photographer, and entrepreneur who claimed that human consciousness has an effect on the molecular structure of water. 
Emoto's conjecture evolved over the years, and his early work explored his belief that the water could react to positive thoughts and words, and that polluted water could be cleaned through prayer and positive visualization. Professor Emoto takes a glass of water and says positive things and plays classical music by Bach to it. He then freezes the water and it crystallizes, and when looked at under a microscope they appear to be pretty crystals. Then he takes a glass of water and says negative things to it and plays acid rock. Again he freezes the water, and when looked at under a microscope they appear to be all nasty ugly crystals. So it's not that the water likes positive words and classical music, water is just water. Well the way that water freezes, the way it crystallizes, there's a lot of uncertainty. If you have uncertainty in the system, then you can modify the system with your intent. So it's because Professor Emoto likes Bach and he detests acid rock, that's why the crystals are like that. You see, it's his intent. It's how occult magic like hoodoo works. It's not the herbs, tea leaves, chicken bones, tarot cards, and spells, but it's the intent in the person casting spells behind the magic. It's also how prayer and healing works. It's not that God answers prayers. It is the intent behind the person that prays. It is not the person laying his hands on somebody trying to heal another person. It is the intent behind that person, and that the other person really believes that he will be healed. If a person really believes it's going to manifest, then it will. Same goes for the person performing magic and casting spells. It's not the magic, it is that the person really believes it will manifest, or another person believes that they will receive the magic. Let's look at the double slit experiment. It is a basic physics experiment, and it was done in the early 1920s. Early to mid-1920s is when most of this research was done. And what it showed was that reality is probabilistic and statistical. And it did that by doing something that was in violation of objective causality. The experiment demonstrated that reality is really made up of probability distributions. Particles are probability distributions, not little hard things. But when you measure them, like measure which slit they go through, you get a particle. And they made a couple wrong conclusions. One, they said, well, it's the measurement that turns the probability distribution into particle. So measurement collapses the wave function is what the physicists of the time would say. And that's really not true. And another thing they said, it takes consciousness to be aware of making a measurement. Consciousness collapses the wave function. That's really not true either. What's true is it is information. Once you measure that you have a particular particle at a slit, and that information is available in this reality, then it has to stay in this reality. So you get a particle. So it's a matter of getting the information and having it in this reality. So this brings me to beliefs like the Law of Attraction. New Age spiritual movements of today follow beliefs of the Law of Attraction. So if you've never heard of this belief, the Law of Attraction.com states, Simply put, the Law of Attraction is the ability to attract into our lives whatever we are focusing on. It is believed regardless of age, nationality, or religious belief, we are all susceptible to the laws which govern the universe, including the Law of Attraction. It is the law of attraction which uses the power of the mind to translate whatever it is in our thoughts and materialize them into reality. In basic terms, all thoughts turn into things eventually. If you focus on negative doom and gloom, you will remain under that cloud. If you focus on positive thoughts and have goals that you aim to achieve, you will find a way to achieve them with massive action. So to conclude, in your life you can connect with the database of consciousness and change your future and manifest positive things in your life. How can I do this, you may ask? Well, I would like to share with you a couple little practices I do every day. One thing I do is I take time to be quiet and I think about things that I would like to manifest into my life. I then speak them into existence by saying them out loud several times, as if they have already manifested. It is my intent that they will manifest. Another thing that I do daily is I write down in a journal the things I would like to manifest into my life. After writing them down, I focus on them and I believe that they have already manifested in my life. By doing these practices, you can change the information in the data stream of consciousness towards your favor and change your reality, which can have an effect on the probable outcome of your future. So you could manifest positive things into your life with your positive intent, so to speak. Now then, if you desire, you may want to apply these types of practices in your daily life. So the powerful key secret of the universe is that you can manifest anything you want into your life if you really believe that it will manifest. It's all in your intent. So to end this video, I would like to state with the words of Tom Campbell that we are all one. It's just one consciousness system. You've probably heard that somewhere. We're all one, right? That's true. We're all pieces of this consciousness system. We're all netted together so we can communicate. We can share information.
Greetings my dears in love and light. Another timeline without the Illuminati. I feel like, in fact I know, and it's up to you whether you choose to believe me, that I have access to another timeline where I am existing there. My consciousness is projected into that timeline. Now our consciousnesses are projected into many different timelines and when we go over they merge into one being and we have experience of all these different timelines. But I feel I have access to one in particular in which I am myself but a vastly different timeline. And I feel like myself in that timeline knows that I exist in this one and knows what it is like and is communicating with me for a reason and it's showing me a different world a vastly different world same world but very different and yet it does exist and I feel like another reason for this communication is that this timeline can be changed it can go down a very similar route not so far ahead, sort of back in time if you will, and not so advanced so quick, but it can go down that route. I feel like we're at a turning point where there are those fighting to liberate this planet at this time, and that very soon the timelines are going to split, and that either they will be successful or they won't at liberating our planet from the clutches of this satanic mafia that has hold of it at this time. Now if we go down the positive route I feel like it will be like this other timeline I'm seeing where this did not occur, where the planet has been liberated for a thousand years and things are very different and I want to describe it to you. Now I get clairvoyant flashes of this and I get a sense of knowing and it feels like when I experience something in this reality, it feels like it's not supposed to be this way. It's supposed to be like this. It would be much better if everyone could see if it was like this. Because we are all so used to how things are as they are and most people cannot see how things could be. Now, I don't watch uh, channelers too much. I read books and things but I don't watch too many other channels or anything like that so if what I say differs from them I apologize and take from this what you will. This is just one timeline I'm seeing from the point of view of myself in that time and space. Okay so I feel like we're in the dark ages, we've been kept in the dark ages. It's like being in the 60s if you will, perpetually in the 60s, except we have been given smartphones and tablets, whereas this is far from where we should be technologically. Life should have moved on far by now. So I'll go through the points quickly. Energy suppression. So many of us believe that free energy is suppressed and we're stuck using oil and gas because it makes a lot of billionaires, well billionaires, but that should have gone a long, long time ago and that we should be using free energy by now. And what that means is that we can literally do anything. It will liberate us to go out into the universe and there's no cars or vehicles. They're not needed because you can step into, this sounds bonkers, but you can step into like, well, like on Star Trek, a transporter and just go wherever you want on the planet kind of limited to this planet but you can get into it and go wherever you want at any time so it's sort of shrunk um, travel so that then anything car wise or, or cycling nothing like that is really needed apart from recreational wise but then travel outside of this planet um, like the film Stargate <laughs> those Stargates and that uh, we are, have been given the technology to go off into the universe by like folding space time so you don't need to worry about traveling fast and the speed of light or traveling fast you literally just go there and this is controlled by thought as well and 
you don't have to physically go somewhere, you can physically go somewhere by a thought and create a manifestation of a part of yourself and be there as well. Um, as well as that, we are taught to use our third eye and uh, it's not suppressed. Now imagine how very different that would be. So we can move objects with our minds freely, there's no more barriers in thought, uh, everything is known. So even though your mind is your own, everything is shared. All this is going along with this ascension, with our consciousness has been raising. Now, our consciousness was allowed to raise quicker and it's been suppressed in this timeline. So we're already much further and it's in harmony with Earth, which is trying to raise, the vibration is raising, but we have gone along with it in total harmony. And so therefore that transition is further along and our spiritual abilities have all come out and everyone's aware of them and it's not uh, it's not just silly stories everyone's aware it's a part of life therefore in the there is an education system and uh, and it's not just meditation and things that's taught but literally how to get a handle on your reality it's not all algebra sitting in a classroom learning maths and, and language. Language isn't actually so important because thoughts can be quickly conveyed in an instant through a sense of knowing. So language is kind of becoming obsolete and not through technology but through mind to mind. But everyone is given the chance to explore their own abilities as they see fit and there's no sort of set curriculum they can explore whatever they want to do because learning is seen as a lifetime endeavour so it's a, a school continues throughout your entire lifetime as it were as well as doing some kind of occupation which again starts from a younger age so you have some i'm not talking about child labor <laughs> but the occupation runs alongside the learning and it's all experience so you'll go out on different different jobs and things <laughs> jobs but I'm like a, a spiritual apprentice, if you were. So if you were learning something about the natural world, a child would go out with a mentor into the mountains and learning um, from a young age. And there'd be things there to learn as well, like meditation and spiritual abilities. But um, every child would get to go on these different, there'd be no more stuck in classrooms. And then the children would get together and learn together, yes. So it would just be a complete overhaul of, of education, it would just be completely different, but it would last your whole life as well. In addition, we all think a lot more clearly. I don't think we realise that our consciousness is dumbed down to a degree by things like microwave radiation from Wi-Fi and phones and, you know, the chemtrails and the stuff in the foods and things and it all has an effect on our cognitive abilities. Now imagine that was all stripped away and you could think to your full potential and fluoride and stuff. Then everyone goes up a grade in intelligence and consciousness anyway. It's freer to expand without that suppression. So everyone's cognitive abilities have improved and everyone has the choice uh, to do whatever they want and every baby born has an equal share of the planet's resources and equal entitlement there is no um, this person earns owns this ton of land and this person has zero there's none of that because the earth is for everyone and that is realized and and there's, it's it's a it's not like a new world order. It's a uh, world unification. Um, there's no power uh, uh, at the top. It's all logically uh, based, and everything is worked out based on uh, need and prosperity. It's more of a logical computer system, and those overseeing it. And there's no central government. It's a network across the planet where power is not centralized because that's not that's dangerous and power is just a blanket across the entire planet now many of us aren't even on the planet many of us are gone into into exploring the universe and their colonies everywhere and and that's what many people choose to do they choose to go off planet and then there are those who choose to stay Yes, there's lots of 
uh, extraterrestrial intelligences here. I see kind of like a, a an airport, like a universal airport, but it's not really like that. Some beings need physical vehicles to come here, but others don't. They just come here by thought. Ascension, as I said, has gone has gone well. And uh, sorry to all those meat eaters out there, but we don't eat other beings anymore. Only plant matter because we physically can't take it and also the idea of eating other beings has become abhorrent to us. The current system is gone and there's no money and what we do, we do because we want to do it and because we want to support our communities uh, locally, which do exist locally, as well as globally. So we all have sort of tasks that we do to support the whole, which we sort of have to do, but it's not an all week nine to five type thing. It's more like a couple of days a week. And each, you may have someone who's in a scientific area also be doing something like distributing uh, food, like a supermarket would kind of thing, but you don't go there and buy it. So everyone takes on a more menial role and they have their higher pursuits as well. In addition to that, there's plenty of days in the week freed up for recreational pursuits, which are very important, and exploring the planet, doing sporting activities and reading and learning. So it's a balance between supporting uh, by doing some work in a supportive maintaining type way in a um, mind exploring type way and a recreational type way it's a perfect balance of that which is how our consciousness is best uh, designed to expand within um, it's optimal for us to be able to expand and therefore the expansion is exponential because the conditions are right um, aging has uh, reduced, it's not eliminated, but we know that aging is a state of mind and that state of mind is not so prevalent as with physical health. So the pharmaceutical industry is no more um, because again there's no money and the power is gone in that area so the billionaires aren't billionaires anymore because no one is a billionaire, everyone is is equal but not in line, I'm not talking in like a communist sort of way that there's still power in those structures. <laughs> um, everyone is equal, there's no billionaires anymore so there's no profit to be made from pharmaceuticals and pharmaceuticals are seen as uh, not agreeing with the body and that there are lots of other ways to heal the body that don't involve such invasive drugs and surgeries and in fact the key is found in nature in many ways so it's all coming back to a very natural state not completely there's still lots of man-made medicines but it's uh, it's not a competitive profit driven type industry it is literally existing for the benefit of mankind only so it's totally person-centered it's nothing to do with profit anymore so with mental health the whole of the uh, attitude of the whole of humanity has changed because from the very very beginning everyone being given an equal chance and there's actually <laughs> uh, parenting um, lessons that happen to help you not only to physically parent but to raise a healthy minded child being emotionally supported and therefore every kid um, doesn't end up a spoiled brat but doesn't end up uh, neglected or anything like that. It's a perfect balance in the middle. So things like crime or stealing or any kind of bad behaviour is eliminated. One, because the system has been eliminated and there's not the uh, financial hierarchy and inequality. And two, because everyone's been mentally supported and given an equal chance and know their own good worth and value. So eliminating the system and financial and giving them the mental and emotional support. No one wants to commit any crimes or do anything negative like that. Depression is almost zero. They do what they want to do and if then anyone has a problem then it's seen to people rush to help each other to feel mentally better. If one pe person is feeling mentally sick it's felt by the others anyway because uh, we are all beginning to be really connected mentally and we can feel each other like we're starting to feel now in this timeline. 
There's bases in the sky and in the sea and at this point they are obviously known about and they were never a secret. Um, there's more land than we know about too and this is used and not secret. There's many secrets that we have in this timeline that are not secret. As we continue to ascend we are remembering our past lives now so you're even born with past life memory so even lifespans are longer up to maybe 250 years or so when you do go over and come back you actually have partial recollection of a previous lifetime so you don't have to start again and this causes many to want to continue to reincarnate as a human being because it's even more exciting at this point because the humanity is really really getting going it's a very exciting time and other species are enjoying watching us and almost reminiscing what it was like when their species went through the same blossoming the same transition the attitude overall attitude really is of loving and understanding because when the negative element of society has been shared the controlling manipulating profit driven greedy element has been eliminated all that's left is the default which is love and with everyone given the proper support and understanding from the beginning and the greedy competitive system materialistic system has been removed it the consciousness just goes into a state of love and oneness and we all want to uh, progress together for the betterment of our race now just with regard to media because there's no more um, corporations no profit no money there's no interest for the manipulation so media is disseminated is actually truth because the drive is here as I say the motivation is for the betterment of humanity and the happiness and the expansion which is very very important and not for the personal gain of the money and the manipulation of belonging to certain groups or societies and and having control over thoughts and also turning each other against ourselves in groups um, the divide and rule thing obviously is gone so we are harmonized I mean that you know none, none of the different groups that fight now there's none of that we are one group and that us and then them are ex extraterrestrial intelligences but again we as we understand we're one with them too so we un unite as a oneness and the divide and rule is gone so we stop fighting amongst ourselves and we grab the needle and point it in one direction as a whole so we use these stargates to get from place to place as well as the thought, as well as using ships as well that fold the space time. There's various ways of getting around. We are in harmony with nature as well because the earth is our nest and we understand that it is a consciousness of its own and everything, as I say, is resource based. So there's enough resources for everyone if managed properly and cities don't, they're not grey and concrete like so much, a lot of green has been brought into them. People are now permitted to have dwellings in natural environments more um, as long as they don't mess it up but no one has a desire to do that. Everyone's been brought up in love and understanding so they wouldn't go and mess up the countryside or anything like that. Everyone's entire attitudes are completely different about everything. There's no selfishness, greed, nothing. It's it's thinking about humanity and the planet first and love and joy and fun and everything so it's a completely different way of thinking for all of us and we're all very mentally healthy we're all very physically healthy as a whole so that's ascension as it should be without the anchors that are holding us back in this timeline that is what I see anyway. It, you might see a different timeline. You might listen to channels that say something different. The reason for that is because we might be seeing different versions of reality, different timelines. That's where I feel I have communication from. I'll continue to receive it and bring it into this reality as a little snapshot of, of what it could be like there. So I hope you enjoyed that and I send you much love. How y'all doing? Another Star Gods vlog. I hope you're enjoying the next warm sunny day because it's just rotten here. It's, oh, it's cold. Oh. Um, 
I want to talk about uh, time travel and universes and all that. And where does it all come from? Basically, it comes from the Jewish Kabbalah. Well, what's the Jewish Kabbalah? Ancient Jewish mysticism. All written down. So, personally, I don't think there's anything Jewish about it. I think it was hijacked by the Christian Gnostics who talk about similar things and then give them the Jewish brand of approval. I just don't think it's Jewish. But anyways, that's for another day. Okay, so how they kind of quash or attempt to quash uh, time travel is they say, well, if you go back in time and you get in a fight with your grandfather and kill him, then you don't exist. So how could you go back in time to get in a fight and kill him? Well, that's what happens there. It's like a stream. You know, if you have a stream of water and you interfere with it, what happens? It builds up and then it starts another stream. It starts to go into a different direction. Well, this is what time is. Time branches off. And so if I, if I did, no. And so if somebody goes back and kills their grandfather, uh, then they no longer exist in that time stream. That grandfather, the papers will read, old man killed by mysterious stranger seen running from the, the house or something like that, right? Uh, that, that, that timeline would remain. Grandfather would be dead, but I would not be part of that future because the future is always being remade as well as history. History is being remade all the time because to, to compensate for the changed uh, futures. But you remember it. You remember the Statue of Liberty because in your old time uh, branch, time stream, you remember the Statue of Liberty, but in this time stream, Statue of Liberty doesn't exist. And then, so you ask your friends, hey, hey, do you remember this big statue with a woman in a torch? What are you talking about? Yeah, well, you, you're weird, man. Bing, welcome to the Mandela Effect. The, the, the Mandela Effect is people that remember their old timeline. And I remember my old timeline and things got changed. Now I'm in an alternative universe and I'll explain how we all ended up in an alternative universe and it still continues. This isn't the time stream I remember. So I remember things from my old time stream like McDonald's with its feature burger, the Mac burger. Not the Mick burger, the Mac burger. It was called the Big Mac. Remember? No, you don't. It was the Big Mac. It was the Big Mac. And uh, it wasn't the Big Mac. It was called the Big Mac for a reason because it was McDonald's signature hamburger. So all of a sudden, I, my, my old time stream's gone. Now it's McDonald's. I can go back and look at the original McDonald's restaurant and it won't say McDonald's, it'll say McDonald's. It's all been altered and changed now. Now, people go, oh, well, you just have bad memory. Oh, really? Oh, really? So there was this guy, um, he was a devout bachelor. He loved his wine, women, and song. Never was interested in getting married. Anyways, he goes out to the bar, comes home, wakes up, and there's some girl in the bed with him. Nothing, nothing particularly out of the ordinary, except the girl turned out to be his wife of, of, of 10 years. And he's got two little kids now. And he's all freaked out. This, this was, I, I heard this guy talking about it. So that's the Mandela effect. It's about absolute life changing experiences. Uh, and there was this woman, there's a lot of these stories. Uh, this woman goes into the bank for 20 years and one day she goes in there and it's all been painted and it's a different sign and everything. And she says, Oh, when, when did, when, when did, uh, everything get, uh, fixed up? What do you mean? No, you know, all this new paint and the new signs. It's always been like this. What are you talking about? This is common. I, I privately know people that have experienced these kind of really bizarre things. We've never renovated 
this is the same bank. It's always been the same bank. What? You know, and then, you know, they get that look at them like, oh, you've been drinking? <laughs> you do drugs? <laughs> uh, so anyway, um, this, I exist now in a different, uh, different time stream. And uh, now you have, uh, what is it called? Synchronicity. Now, what is synchronicity? Synchronicity is part of a program. It's a matrix programming system, as far as I'm concerned. It, it's a program. And uh, so if you're going to put out some information on the internet, what do you do? You put it into YouTube or you can put it into a PDF file. You can make a video. There's, there's different ways of expressing information. So now it comes through all these branches. It doesn't, it's, and this is the way it is with synchronicity. Uh, you know, you'll be thinking about a, something, a problem, you're trying to figure out, and all of a sudden, there it is on YouTube, somebody dealing with the same problem. You go, what? And then all of a sudden, it, I've had that. I had a problem I was thinking of and went in my head, and all of a sudden, I listened to the radio, and the radio, the lyrics were talking exactly about the problem I was going through. Exactly. And so this indicates to me that we program daily our universe. We, we program our reality. Like you'll be sitting there thinking, oh, purple monkeys. And all of a sudden, tonight, a special on ABC, purple monkeys discovered in Africa. And, and then it just starts filtering through. You programmed it, now it filters through. Now, if you're really into this... Um, Oh, what is it? Uh, power of intention. Okay, I want a limo right now. And, and let's say you got real, in, your powers of intention are really in tune, right? Okay, so you're going to think of a black limousine. I want a black limousine right in the front. Poof! Then boom, there it is. It has to have a history to it. So now uh, people remember, oh yeah, that black limo. Yeah, I remember working on that one in the factory. Yeah, yeah. I put my initials secretly under the hood. You lift the hood and there's the guy's signatures. It has to have a history. Things just can't. Our rational minds will not allow things to pop into existence without a history to it. And so everything we do, and it also changes the, the yeah, the, it changes history too. Everything is pliable. Everything is like clay. There's no hard firm, written in stone, reality. Reality is what you make it. Reality is, is what you bring into this earth. And I know it's with the, the, the power of intention, it, you can prove it to yourself anytime. It's not a, con, a constant, uh, it's more or less a hit and miss thing. Uh, sometimes it really works, like just a quick thought and boom, there, you know. Uh, other times, no, it's, you know, you try and you try and you try and try. And I've done things with the power of intention I don't talk about because it's just too unbelievable. The results were just too, whew. Now they locked me away for sure. The, so the thing is now you have uh, uh, karma, not karma, sorry. Uh, deja vu. Now you have deja vu. So you end up in an, in an alternative stream and you have a deja vu. I've been here before. Well, you were there before in the, the other uh, stream, but this stream is actually, you haven't been in this stream before, but it is familiar. So now you're, wow, now I get it. Now I get it. So anyways, I know this is getting a little boring, but you, you, you got to hang in there trying to come up with jokes that keep you occupied but my brain is <laughs> so now how did we get here mama how did we get here how did i get into this alternative uh this alternative uh time stream how did i get here you know now i had one just a while ago uh i had a uh a, 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 a yeah, uh, 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 uh. speech therapy coming. Um, I had a Mandela effect just a while ago, so I've slipped into another time stream. 
and I don't know why I'm doing this. I don't know why I'm slipping and other people are slipping into time streams every once in a while. It's not just a one hit thing. Well, here's the answer. CERN. Now here's an article on CERN. One year after CERN's grand opening, Sergio Berlucci, uh, former director of research and science computing of the facility, grabbed headlines when he told British tabloid uh, the super collider would uh, open otherworldly doors to another dimension for a very tiny lapse of time. Well, maybe it wasn't so tiny, but yeah, a new door. So this is opening to a new stream, time stream is what it's saying. Uh, I was with somebody, I couldn't find them, and I was thinking, where are you? And all of a sudden, this woman over in one of the aisles goes, where are you? You see what I mean? I'm bringing things into existence. We all are bringing things into existence. And just like the limo, they're creating a different history. There's a different history is changing second by millisecond all the time in my mind. So now you have people that some people have seen things happen only to discover that it never happened because they're jump, jump streaming again. But, uh, and, and synchronicity is just downloading information and it just, to download the information, it has to come in some kind of form and it comes in different forms. It comes in forms of, of uh, well, they say coincidence. I don't believe in coincidence, but, uh, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll be thinking about something like, how do I grow better tulips? You know, you'll be working on that. How do I grow better tulips? Then you'll be on a bus and strangely enough, Two women are sitting there talking about how to grow better tulips. Well, listen, because you're getting the answer from your higher computer up there. That's what synchronicity is. And deja vu, when you jump the time streams, yeah, it looks like home, but it's, it's a little different. That's what I liked about sliders. Every time they would come back from a, a time continuum, the guy would walk up to his front fence and he'd move it because his original fence would squeak. And if it didn't squeak, oh, we're not back home yet. They're an alternative uh, timeline. So anyways, this, this, this thing is so, it's so confusing. I, 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 I can't, I wish I could just explain it better, but I, I'll leave it to the smart guys to think about it. And, explain it better but we create things and we rewrite history is being rewritten all the time second by second second by second because uh things are happening now which changes history so we create our reality every day and when we create a new reality every day the time stream changes and we're being taught. Uh, it's a big computer up there, the big cosmic computer. Uh, the, uh, uh, what is it, the Ash, uh, Ash something records uh, of the universe. So you just, if you want to learn something, don't go to the internet, go to your inner self and keep your eyes and ears open. And it's a program system. You know, somebody may know when they're, their, their spouse is coming home because there's just certain things that take place that it's a script. I can't explain it and I can't teach this to you. You have to learn for yourself. You have to observe, compare all the thoughts that you think, maybe write them down or something and everything that happens during the day. They're so connected. Um, so I don't know how to explain describe but certain actions you know every time I do this this happens just like clockwork if I do this this happens or that happens so look at your own self and realize and learn to see the script because it's all programmed it's part of the matrix program it's like uh, the sims the sims are programmed to do certain things and what they do and same with the video game. If I'm in a war game and I'm going to a certain part of the war 
on, on, on the map and I go there, that clicks a new programming that comes in. So I go here, boom, all of a sudden, there's all these uh, other soldiers attacking me. Same thing with real life. You go into a certain position, you do certain things, it will trigger another thing, a repetitiveness. You'll notice the repetitiveness of it all. You'll just go, oh my goodness, every time I do that, that happens, you know, every time. Um, so uh, just look for that in your life. So look at your thoughts at the end of the day and real, and then you'll realize if you look at what happened during the day and what you thought during the day are like this, eh? They, so we're bringing in our own reality all the time. We just got to learn how to master it. We just got to learn how to master it. So we can change reality and the Mandela effect proves that reality can be altered and changed. Anyways, enough. I, I can kind of gavin away here, but look at your actions during the day and your thoughts and, and, and look for the script, look for the, 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 the foundation um, script. This is the script that keeps going like a clock and the same things. The milkman comes and the postman comes and it, it's like the Truman show. It's all programmed. All the actors in the Truman show had their parts to play and it was like clockwork. Now it's nighttime, you know, they all had their, their, their parts to play and it becomes part of the script, but you can change the script. You can change your life. You can change everything. Just focus on it, learn from it. And the synchronicity is, is all a part of it. You're drawing information from the great computer in the sky. And I guess that's all I can say. Um, so in closing, look at your life and look, try to observe the programming and try to observe how you change the programming. Everything is like a video game. Everything's programmed on your decision. You know, if you're going to, if you're in, in a war game and you're going to turn to the right, there's going to be two Germans waiting for you to shoot out, turn to the left. There's a Creek at which you can escape by. It, and they don't come in, they don't even exist until you go in that direction. Then they pop into existence. Oh, in the programming language of, of, the, uh, of the PlayStation or, or Xbox, in the game, it doesn't exist until you get there. The hills don't exist in the landscape until you get close. This is the thing. Everything is being manufactured. And do me a favor and go and get a hold of the Star Trek episode, Shore Leave. And that will explain to you exactly what our reality is and why we have to control our thoughts. So there you go. So I'm going to just end it, period. Thank you very much. Hello, beloved. We're back, the Celestial Team, speaking through Judith. And we are back from a video that we shot because we could hear questions coming from you about it. You see, we're not locked into linear time. So we went ahead to see you watching the video. And we saw many asking the same question. So we thought, well, we'd better answer it before they have to worry or, or wonder about it because worry is a big deal on your planet. So the answer to the question that some of you asked is, the short answer is, you can do it. You know how. Don't even think about it. The question is, how can I just make a different choice in the now? I mean, that fast. How can I, like, make it different? Right? Felt overwhelming. It doesn't, it can, it, it takes a nanosecond, first of all. 
we're talking to you about something that feels uh, impossible from the 3D perspective. It is not. Trust us. Trust yourself. You can do it. If you are, have set yourself, you're centered, you're in alignment, you're in integrity, and present. So you know what happens. And you see something or hear something that activates you, that stirs up old pain or anger, right? All right, then you know. You know it is not from now. It's too strong from reading something. You read something. It's neutral. It stirred up meaning to you, memories, assumptions about what it means, decisions. Those are all from the past. Now is new, right? So, if you stay very centered, you will see that. Oh, I have an attachment to that. I keep repeating that feeling. So, you decide to release the attachment. You decide to let it go because it isn't now. That's it. It's that easy. But then you have to choose. And I'm telling you, you'll do this in a nanosecond because your brain won't do it. You'll do it from your center. You'll find the frequency you want instead. You'll find the reality you want instead. What, what would you prefer? Feel how that would feel to have that. How would it feel to be in a world without violence? How would it feel to never be afraid of anyone ever again? Get the feeling and then you will pulse that frequency out. And in that way, you will begin to change your very reality. Now, it's not happening all at once because you need practice. This is practice time. Can you imagine if all of you had mastered this and everything anyone pulsed out or felt or wanted happened instantaneously? We suspect that many of you would be dead in about two minutes. You need to practice because the people who would do that don't take themselves seriously, right? They think, I hate them, or I wish I was dead. Okay. Obviously, they don't know how much power they have, right? And so, people do and say and wish things that are not in their best interests. You have to practice. They have to learn to stay in the now and to take themselves seriously. What they think, what they want what they choose to feel, yeah? So anyway, you've decided to let go of judgment of whatever it was. If it's somebody that you resent, forgive them. Then forgive yourself for resenting them. Then forgive anything or anybody else that comes to mind. It just doesn't matter. All resentment does is keep you attached to the very thing that because you're watching this video, we assume you want to release. So you release the judgment. You reset at the frequency of what you'd like to feel instead. And then you hold it. In that now, in this now, and the next now, and the next now, you hold it. You stay present, you check in. If you're not still there, you reset. It's practice. That's it. Remember, just a moment, Judith is thirsty. Remember, drink a lot of water these days because of the energies are so intense and you're doing so much. Remember, beloved, what it was like when you learned to drive a car. Remember all of the things that you were supposed to remember at the same time time, in exactly the same moment, you were supposed to remember how to use so many things in the car, steering and the mirrors and the shift and the this and the that and the, right? 
it felt, that was very multidimensional, by the way, gave you a little preview, but it felt overwhelming. It felt frustrating. Many of you thought, I'm never going to be able to master this. But you did. You learned. You mastered it. It's the same with this, what we're telling you in the moment you can do. You practice. It won't feel like it only takes a moment. You'll lag behind. You'll catch up. You'll correct it. You'll notice. That's the process now. That's what you're here to be doing. The more you do it, which is really a state of being, but we have to use your words to, to be understood. The more mastery you'll gain, the more you'll shift, the happier you'll be. It's all up to you, though. But it is very much like learning to drive a car. So use that metaphor when you feel overwhelmed or frustrated. And remember, nothing is lost. Nothing is a mistake. If you have to reset, oh, that's there again. I need to release some more judgment. I'm so glad that happened to show me. Reset. You may need to reset hundreds of times a day. Good. The more you do, the more it will become your new way of being. Until you notice you're, you've shifted. Remember this as well. You are creator beings. You really do create your reality. And hopefully now you're starting to really get a feel of the truth of that. Now, creativity, the act of being creative, is always spontaneous. Meaning, in the moment. In the moment. Creative people, actors, Improvis let's use improvisation. Improvisation artists, actors, are work in the moment, right? That's what you are. You, they make a million choices and things just come to them. Same with you, that is what will happen. You are creative, trust the moment. Don't, have, don't come in with agendas, that's the past. Trust the moment, tune in to yourself in your heart center and just go with it go with what comes to you you'll learn to trust you'll learn to trust you'll learn to trust flow you'll learn to trust that it's safe you'll learn to trust that it works right so remember that and if you're doing something and it doesn't feel like play in some way then you're probably not in the moment you're repeating some old pattern in the past. And is that what you want? No. Spontaneous choosing and deciding in the moment feels like play. This is what you came for. This is what you've been waiting for. And remember, it is your show. You are the star. So, ascend. Bring your star up. You can. Promise, we promise you that. There's no question. So enjoy. Practice. If this is something you've always wanted to do and now you get to practice and learn. Enjoy. This is an active time. This is a time of pulsing out frequencies and then taking actions to match them. That's also how the male-female parts of you, the divine male and female, are integrating pulsing out frequencies and acting on them. But that's a whole other video. We just thought we'd throw it in because it relates. But remember, it's your show. Play it, do it, love it, have fun with it. There is no, no wrong choices. Release judgment from yourself. Play like a child. How we love you. What confidence we have in you. How thrilling it is to us when we do see you play in the moment and become the gods you are. Goodbye for now, beloved. We'll be back and we're around, you know. You can feel our frequencies if you, if you, if you take them in now as you watch this or when you read our messages. 
feel it, bookmark it, and then when you'd like to feel us around, just remember the frequency, conjure it up. And there we are. You see, you're a magician.